Hello, my name is Kirioth, and today we are going to take a look at one of my favourite, favourite kit-bashed armies. Now, this isn't even kit-bashing in a lot of this. This is like full-on, and I say there is a difference, conversions. This is an army that I saw way back, way, way back. I mean, this is from White Dwarf 298. Eight, I believe, uh, which was around 3rd edition. I can't remember the exact year of this White Dwarf, but this was an army that had a massive, massive impact on me and my Orc force that I had at the time, which I'd originally built just to be a bunch of foot sloggers, but this issue of White Dwarf came out, and in it was this army, Tanks Speed Freaks. Now, you'll immediately realise... Um, just straight away, this is significantly different to anything you might have seen recently, shall we say, in terms of conversions. Because if we take a, a bit of a closer look at some of this stuff, you'll notice that some of this stuff have... I mean, there's no there's no actual Games Workshop model involved in some of these conversions. I mean, if I remember correctly, that massive monster truck, which was a battle wagon, that that is just an RC car. Now, that's a radio control truck, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't have all the pages from this White Dwarf, which is a little bit frustrating, but there was like a full breakdown of what all of these things were, basically. That is, you know, that is a third-party product that was just like a toy car of some kind that was converted into an Orc battle wagon. Back then, there was no battle wagon model. You made your own, or you didn't have a battle wagon. Mine was a Land Raider and a Rhino put together, and it's hellish expensive to reproduce now. I have looked. Um, and I mean, the same goes for all of these different vehicles. You know, there are multiple different conversions that are just based entirely on stuff that wasn't even related to Warhammer 40k. It wasn't even models. I mean, again, that's the war truck there, almost entirely made out of, again, I think it was an RC car of some kind. There are actual, you know, kit bashes so to speak that was genuinely the old war buggy kit right there but as you can see the front wheels are the same the back wheels are completely different the general structure of that thing is completely different it's nothing like it like it was kind of stock and again the war buggy <laughs> above it well that is ridiculous there's your Death Killer War Trike. Um, just, <laughs> just if you're wondering what... The, I don't think the inspiration for the Death Killer War Trike was that, but it did immediately make me think of that. Um, you know, there's bits of Orc bike on there, but again, it's all like third-party pieces. I seem to remember there were like bits of... It wasn't Technic. Connects, I think it was. Um, like bits of like Lego and, you know, stuff from completely different products that all went into making Tank Speed Freaks. And this, honestly, again, like War Buggy number three, nothing to do with orcs for the most part. Just random vehicles scavenged from wherever. I think, if I remember correctly, that was almost completely scratch built. I don't think that was even based off a like a a vehicle. I think maybe the wheels were attached to like the whatever vehicle was on top. Like the base of it is still there, but. I seem to remember that there's a couple of these that were like properly just constructed out of plastic card and stuff, and I think War Buggy Number Three was one of them. It's been a while since I've been able to see the full breakdown of this, um, but I'm pretty sure that that is like almost entirely built by hand, apart from the wheels that form the base. I mean, some of the just some of this stuff it still looks great even now. I will I'll say right now this is a very subjective thing. There are plenty of people in my hobby group who really did not like this army. Um, well, I remember one guy just kept referring to the dude who built this as the Tonka Toy guy, which, you know, he he was not he was not particularly a fan of it. But just for sheer inventiveness and for like like the scope of it, the ambition of it, it really struck a massive chord with me. You'll notice that. There are like complete inconsistencies in terms of some stuff. So that war truck is massive. It's huge. It's like that's modelling for disadvantage if ever you've seen it. And yet the war truck there, a lot smaller, a lot more reasonable, a lot more sensible in terms of you know not standing out on the battlefield. Um, 
in fact, they're all completely different sizes. The, the two war trucks on uh, on the right and the left there um, are almost battle wagon size. I mean, the battle wagon is massive, but those war trucks are not that far off. Whereas the war truck in the centre is considerably smaller. Again, I think that was mostly scratch built that thing, apart from the uh, the base with the wheels. And it wasn't just like the hated death copters everywhere. Um, <laughs> it wasn't just the uh, it wasn't just the the vehicles that I really liked. It wasn't just the vehicles that stood out to me either. You know, the Ard Boys had a significant amount of stuff done to them. There were bits from the fantasy range of of orcs that were used to create the Ard Boys, which is a, an idea that I absolutely completely stole for mine. You know, I, for the Ard Boys, I took bits of armor from other kits. I took bits of armor from like a friend of mine had a couple of. Uh, boxes like random fantasy crap that they'd never got around to using and that was scavenged heavily to to make my orc army almost entirely based off not even not even this specific force like my army didn't look like this army but this was like a major driving thing in terms of oh i it's not just the color scheme you can make this look exactly how you want it to look you can do whatever you like with it not only can you do whatever you like with it, but it's appreciated enough that you will see it in White Dwarf. I mean, you know, this is this was the official Games Workshop publication, still is. Whether you'd see something like this in today's, I doubt, because there is a severe lack of actual Games Workshop product in a good amount of this army. I mean, a lot of the vehicles are just nothing to do with GW at all. But in terms of inventiveness, in terms of building a, like a proper theme, I mean, I completely nicked war boss tank as well like my my war boss again it used it used gasgill but it was heavily messed with it was heavily converted and it was based on this because this gave me the i guess the drive to try and do something mine wasn't quite as ambitious as this um i really wish i had some photos of it actually but it was still, this is like a, a formative thing in terms of the hobby for me because no one in my group tried stuff like this. No one in my, in my like, in my little hobby group based out of the little local gaming store we had tried anything of this scope. There might be like the occasional head swap or, you know, a bit of an unconventional weapon going on here and there, you know, a couple of counts as examples, but there was nothing on this scale. There's nothing of this scope. Like, the Storm Boys, that genuinely kind of it blew me away the first time i saw that because i didn't like the way most flying things looked i didn't like the poses that other people went for like the the plastic flying bases the clear ones just never did anything for me and then along came this with the like the the insane sculpted smoke out of the jetpacks was something that I'd never even thought about doing. I attempted it. It looked terrible. I was not... I didn't have the skill required to pull that off at all. But it was at least something that gave me the idea to try. And that's something that I hadn't thought about up until that point. Even the poses on them, I believe, were like heavily messed with and modified. I'm pretty sure that they weren't posed like out of the box the way they uh, the way they are for that, although to be honest, that, that could be wrong. I don't know if the Storm Boys have had a new kit since I had a sum uh, in third. It's Orgs, so they may well not have done. Um, but yeah, it, there's just so many bits of this army. I mean, the most the most stock things on here are, you know, the infantry, the Death Copters, even the Death Copters have got bits on them that have been changed. Um, it was... It's like a properly formative experience, this, looking at this army. Uh, even down to things like the paint scheme. Something that um, was very common in my gaming group. I'm trying to find a good... Yeah, that is a good example. Um, it, something that was very common in my gaming group, amongst other players who had orc armies, was this very dark green and this very shiny green. It was, it was like... It was very kind of... It looked like oiled skin as opposed to like being textured and I never really liked it I never liked how kind of smooth and shiny it looked but everyone in my gaming group painted their orcs the same way they all painted them like that and then this army showed up in white dwarf and there was there was texture and like the definition was different on the skin it looked different to anything that I'd seen in person at that point 
there are certain things that I didn't like about it. Like, for instance, I liked some of the colours used, but I didn't like the whole face coverage on some of them. Um, I was not a big fan of, like, the banners on the Scarboys. When I made my Scarboys, I went mental with green stuff, so they all had, like, massive scars across their faces, they had scars across their arms and stuff. They were very distinctive just because they looked like they'd been beaten to hell as opposed to using, like, the uh, the kind of... I guess, like, the, the banner system that was in Tank Speed Freaks. But, yeah, I I just wanted to share this specific army with you because this is, as I say, like, it was like a formative thing of not knowing how far you could push it, not really having a clear understanding of just what you could do in terms of converting, in terms of kit bashing, in terms of, even in terms of, like, just the smallest thing of painting orc skin. Everything was done a certain way in my hobby group. And so seeing this... That's what sparked, like, all of that stuff about, like, fully converting stuff. My own Warriors army that I had at the time was very standard. After I saw this, that changed a lot. I did a lot of, like, kit bashes and conversions just to make it more my own. And I'm not going to say that without without Tank Speed Freaks, you know, I wouldn't be as into kit bashing and converting as I am. But it is definitely something that fully kick-started that, I, like, that idea and that passion for the hobby. This is something that properly formed me into like the hobbyist that I am at the moment. The fact that I essentially cannot leave a kit alone. I've got to mess with it in some way. I've got to put some sort of spin or twist or slant on it. And in a, in a real way, this this force, Tank Speed Freaks, it properly kick-started that in me. So, really, this is just like a massive excuse for just a big nostalgia trip. But I suddenly thought about this army the other day, and I realised that I hadn't seen a picture of it for ages. I don't have that copy of White Dwarf anymore. Sadly, I lost my White Dwarfs when I uh, moved house a few years back. Um, but I kind of I wanted to see it again. Luckily, someone was able to find the name of it because I couldn't even remember the name of the army, and it, it just it all brought it flooding back. That kind of rush of I could I could totally do this. I could do something like this. And I'm going to. I don't think you get that. That's like not a once in a lifetime thing, but it's rare. It's rare something like kickstarts you that much that you immediately want to go and start messing with your stuff this very second. But that this army did that for me. Is there any particular army, any force, any like kit bashed or converted character or or you know whether it's 40k or fantasy or even Battlefleet Gothic or something, is there some force that you saw that like massively inspired you to try and do something yourself? And if so, what was it? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this as much as I still do. It's it's It feels a little bit like a relic of its time in a way because I just don't know that you'd even see something like this in White Dwarf anymore. Just because there's so much in the way of non-Games Workshop stuff in there. You know, there's like one vehicle in there that is actually Games Workshop. Well, technically, technically more than that, because the the fighter bomber and the uh, death copters are obviously Games Workshop. But in terms of ground vehicles, the war buggies, for the most part, you know, you've got <laughs> you've got one war buggy that has got a Games Workshop chassis and one that's got an orc bike on the front of it. The war trucks aren't. The battle wagon isn't. It's it's a properly it's a properly brilliant force this. Like the execution of it, the way it's been put together, the theme of it. I think genuinely one of my all time favourite armies. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of this awesome orc speed freak force in the comments down below. And uh, in the meantime, feel free to click any of the stuff you see on the screen, Patreon, subscribe videos, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next one. Toodaloo.